Welcome back to On the Edge in Focus. I'm your host, Peter Martinez, and we have a special guest with us today, a Emmy Award-winning TV producer and writer, Pamela Mason Wagner, and welcome back to the show. I just wanted to ask you about something called Turtle Rock Productions. What is mm -hmm. that? Well, in 1993, my husband and I founded our own production company in New York, and we formed a corporation. Um, my husband is a composer and a writer, and I'm a producer, writer, director. So between the two of us, we cover a lot of the bases. Um, and we decided we wanted to have our own shingle to hang out. And my whole career, I've been a freelancer, but it's sort of nice to work for myself, as opposed to constantly working for other people. Does it offer you creative freedom in, in terms of calling your own shots sometimes? Well, yes and no. I mean, if you work in television, creative freedom, you're always on somewhat of a short leash because you do have a client that you are trying to please. Um, on the other hand, I do have the freedom of determining my own hours and when I take my vacations, and that's nice too. Yeah. What, what does your husband, uh, what, what skills does he have in terms of uh, video or documentaries? Well, as I said, he is a composer. He uh, did major in composition in college and sort of before there were computers, so he knows how to do the orchestration the old-fashioned way and has built his career uh, creating scores for documentaries, which is convenient since I also work in documentary filmmaking. And in addition, I think after 20 years of that, he really has more to offer than just music, but nobody ever asked the composer, mm -hmm. hey, how do you like the script, or how can we make this movie better? So he started, he joined the Writers Guild of America, and he got involved writing screenplays and scripts for documentaries, and has found that to be very rewarding. And he has written um, a program about Rod Serling for American Masters, and he wrote the Lucille Bo documentary called Finding Lucy, and has some other things in the pipeline as well. In terms of some of your previous projects that, you, that you've that you worked on, what, what are you most proud of? Um, well, I think that's sort of like asking a mother which of her children is her favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you always care about the youngest one, the one you gave birth to most recently. Uh -huh. um, so in some Fun ways, way to look at it. <laughs> I'm most proud of my last project, which aired on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day on Discovery HD Theater. HD? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, it was called Christmas and the Civil War, and it was telling the story of the Civil War through the eyes of six characters. We used real words from diaries and letters. Mm. Uh, some were famous. Louisa May Alcott was one of the characters. Okay. Thomas Nast, a famous cartoonist from the era. Mm -hmm. And how the war impacted their lives. And then we also told the story of how some of the traditions we celebrate at Christmas time evolved and sort of came together during the war, including our depiction of Santa Claus, mm. which was created in 1862 by Thomas Nast. Okay. Our sort of picture of a jolly man with a big white beard and a fat belly mm -hmm. really was first put down on paper in 1862. And he was a Civil War character. He was a northerner, and he was only bringing presents for northern soldiers. Wow. So it's a kind of story a lot of people don't know. And it was a way to look at the Civil War in a different way. And one of the things we told the story of Gettysburg sort of in a backdoor way, because Thomas Nast was sent by his editor to, to draw pictures of a battle in Pennsylvania that was happening in July of that year, but he got arrested on the way hmm. and incarcerated, so he didn't make it to the battle. Uh -oh. And the battle he missed was the Battle of Gettysburg. So, What a way to miss some <laughs> history there, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, how about, I, I know you've worked on another project. Uh, maybe the next one on your list, uh, most recent after that one? Yeah, well, I my career sort of has several phases. Um, I've been doing a lot of history projects lately, and that phase sort of began with the Lucy documentary and went on to include um, three films about three different saints, St. Francis of Assisi, St. Patrick of Ireland, and then Joan of Arc. Those all aired on the Hallmark Channel, okay. and they're one-hour programs that docudramas. Hmm. They have a lot of recreation footage in them, and they tell the story of those saints in their own words using their writings about themselves. So they're trying to sort of debunk some of the myths around those saints and also tell a dramatic story, almost like a feature film, uh, through this recreation footage with actors and costumes and props and sets and that was a lot of fun. It took me to Italy and Ireland wow. and we filmed Joan of Arc in the Czech Republic because France was too expensive. No worries there. Uh, how long are your, your works? Are they hour, two hours? Yeah, uh, either between one and, and one and a half. Um, 
90-minute documentaries are not that um, popular on PBS anymore. Mm -hmm. So the Lucio Ball film was 90 minutes, but a lot of these projects I've just been describing are an hour. Okay. Yeah, and then prior to the period where I was working on historical projects, I did a lot of cinema verite projects. Mm -hmm. And in that period of my career, I was working a lot with Bill Moyers. And I was filming real people in contemporary settings in going about their lives. And I did work on a program called Close to Home, Moyers on Addiction, okay. where I directed the third hour in the series about recovery so and it was treatment. So a multi-part mm -hmm. series. That was a five-part series. Five parts, okay. And I also worked on a program called Healing in the Mind with Bill Moyers, which did win the Emmy the year it, it came out. Uh, and it was really about mind-body medicine. Before anybody was talking about mind-body medicine, it really kind of broke that subject open for many Americans. I think something like a third of all people today in America use some kind of complementary non-Western medicine mm -hmm. in addition to going to the doctor. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't so true at the time that that program first came out. Wow. Yeah, and Bill's been a tremendous mentor for me, and I've certainly learned a lot from him and mm -hmm. owe many opportunities to him. And I, people always ask me, is he as great as he seems, you know, <laughs> in real life? And I have to say, yes, he is. He is really you a can't great say guy. can't that about everybody, but no, it's good to hear. No, but it's true about Bill Moyers. He really is as great as he seems. Yeah. We have mentioned the Finding Lucy uh, PBS show, and it won a Emmy for Outstanding Primetime Nonfiction Series. You were the director and producer of it. What was some of the experiences you had with it? Pros and cons or mm -hmm. on well, making this? Well, it was really a challenge to make a film about somebody as well known as Lucille Ball. Mm -hmm. And I think we wanted to get underneath the stuff that everybody knew already and try to show a different face. So I remember when we started out, I said, I want this film to make everybody laugh, but I also want it to make people cry because she did have a kind of a tragic, sad life in many ways, like many comedians. So um, the clip that we're showing is about the last broadcast of the I Love Lucy show. And Edie Adams was invited to sing, because they had guest mm -hmm. artists periodically. And she had picked this song and didn't realize how inappropriate it might be for the moment. And she's telling us that story and how everybody was just so upset and depressed that this show was ending and it was really the end of an era. Hmm. And a lot of the people who worked on that I Love Lucy show were like family. And they couldn't believe that the show was ending. And the next day, Lucy and Desi got a divorce. Wow. She filed for papers the very next day. So not only was it the end of a program and the end of these people's collective work lives, but it was the end of a very, you know, high visibility marriage in Hollywood. So many facets behind the scenes that, that went into it. Um, for, for the Lucy uh, documentary, what do you think the impact of it is? I, it, you mentioned before the show that it still plays on PBS. They run it constantly on pledge. I guess mm -hmm. it's a perennial favorite, and they try to run show pleasing, audience pleasers during pledge. But I think it just helps people understand who she was behind the scenes. So with that, we're going to take a short break again. But when we come back, we're going to learn more about Pamela Mason Wagner, what she has in store with future projects and some advice to give to students. So stay tuned, you're watching On the Edge in Focus. We'll be right back. 